Welcome back to the Sometimes Built. Today we are installing a Banks iDash system in Charlie's 2022 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. It's gonna look like this. Join us. Alright, so first thing first we need to remove the existing gauge or the existing part of the dash, right? Yep. This is an American vehicle, that. right? So the whole thing just American vehicle, so it's got plastic clips versus metal clips and everything else. And you use a torx bit to get the side panel off. There's two torx and one little socket. And this is the uh, 3D printed gauge pod. This is a prototype. He's going to print one and then we're going to wrap it in some vinyl wrap he has or paint it, something like that. Finish it properly. This is just a test. This, this is printed in uh, PETG. There's a PLA, PETG, and then ABS, where PETG, I guess, is right between those two, between PLA and ABS in terms of temperature stability. Because there have been people that have used PLA print material and they have a glob when they come back the next day after yep. a hot afternoon. So we'll see how this PETG fares and if it works then he'll make another one. I did buy some ABS so I have not ventured into ABS printing before. I also bought an enclosure so if that works then uh I thought you were selling your printers. Is you is it one you're not selling if you're converting? Isn't it like ABS or nothing? Yeah, it's pretty much ABS or nothing. So I'd like to I'd like to sell them all and upgrade to a Voron, but they're about seventeen hundred dollars. Whoa. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Popped off the little covers for this. So I was looking online, I don't, this just pops off because I've taken it off once before. Pop that off. Of course, you're supposed to disconnect your battery before you do all this, but these are all safe plugs. 3D print part's going to mount on here. But you got to take that piece off so you yeah. can, it's like a bracket that so sits behind it. So this will go yeah. up here some way or another and need some epoxy, I guess, to hold the bolts into this. It is a 10. <laughs> But it's a Chevy. So, I guess we're using 10 mils on American cars now. Let's put this on. Nice plastic clips. It's not a pull down. You gotta be kidding me. A plastic clip, which did not come off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it literally came off. <laughs> it's an alligator clip, the red one. So it's like you push into it and it doesn't come off. What happens if you have to take the truck apart? Yeah, we had to pull your dash off. It costs $300 for a new dash piece. Dang, it's a nice breeze out here. Yeah. It's like put the hammock out here and fall asleep. So that will mount like so. We'll need some, do you have some epoxy or something? Mm, I got a glue gun. That'll work. Hot glue gun will work fine. <laughs> to the basement. Right down here in the 3D print workshop, um, you know, where I paint things like a year ago that I haven't finished yet, but hopefully we're ready for this year. Anyways, we are gonna be taking the hot glue gun and we're gonna sink these nuts into there. There we go. That just pop it out. It will also work. A nice self tapper. Never go wrong by shooting a self tapper in there. It's still. It's like if as soon as I tighten this down, it's gonna rip the hot glue out. So we're using these big chunga screws. But prototype, just a prototype, which goes right through the bottom of the. As we know, Uncle Charlie will perfect this. And he'll have a resin printed one and paint it and the right hardware. Nice and 
Nice and tight. Yeah, this would never work with the BMW. Yeah, they don't have those big open. You, you could literally fit back in here. Okay, that's not inclusive. <laughs> that gets removed. was this this banks Uncle Charlie did not get it on sale <laughs> I want to say it was like $300 that's why when I opened it up I was like that's a lot smaller than I thought it was <laughs> like would I put it in the tundra and not for $300 I wouldn't it has, so it's basically an OBD2 yeah it's a full OBD2 reader but you can also trigger regen on the truck because you're not supposed to turn the truck off if it's doing a regen but the truck doesn't tell you when it's going to do a regen so this will tell you the um, the percentage of, I don't want to say clog, but... Time left before you need to read Yeah, like back pressure or whatever that the truck is reading to mm. trigger it. But if you're on the highway, that's when you want to trigger it. So you can just trigger a regen when you're driving. That would be hard, but wait for a meeting? Well, now you're going to be later. Sorry, I can't turn my truck off. It did it for me, like, one of the second times I was driving it or something and I didn't know what it was doing and I turned the truck off and I'm like why the heck does the truck smell like burning plastic <laughs> and I hit up a uh, buddy Jeremy in Pennsylvania and he was like oh it's your regen I'd say I would get that for like the van again to know like when the fuel pressure drops because since I have you know a new hole once a week but no OBD2 in a 1988 van again yeah, got, is that even OBD1 no there is no OBD, there is no OBD. <laughs> it's uh is it running yes it's working. <laughs> no, it's definitely not going to slip right in. measured the gauge, it's supposed to be a 52 mil, and it's 51.3. That's a little loose in there. Two torques, a tiny one there, and then these two up here. So five volts total. And that wraps up the uh, Banks eye gauge system here. There's a lot of, a lot of customizability, even down to the screen colors. Pretty much every sensor in the car you can pull up on here. So he has things like the depth level, the soot percentage, soot percentage. the ECTs, engine load, battery, boost, boost. Uh, I don't know what AAT is, AAP. It's my first diesel truck, so I'm going to learn all about this thing. But you can see here, there's just whatever you could want for pedal percentage, everything else. Speed of velocity, engine RPM, pressures, ambient air pressures, boost pressure. Maybe that's the only one. Command or map, trans information. And you can set multiple pages up on this somehow or another. So I'm gonna watch a lot of YouTube videos and hopefully do some forum searching and maybe we can get a this is a good setup for page one, page two, mm -hmm. page three. Drop a comment down below if that's helpful. It'd be helpful for me and I haven't found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I like people to tell me what to do and I'll set it up. <laughs> and apparently you can customize it. Like you said, like maintenance stuff, it's like yellow and towing can be red. Yeah. And so different color screens for different things. That way, you know, you can just flick over real quick. What if you can have the gauges go like red if something's wrong or something? I assume so. Like set a min-max range and if it's over Probably this. Probably for certain gauges. Yeah, this is a PETG 3D printed pod. He's going to make a ABS one and then wrap it to match. So if I can get these printed in ABS, it's something I could add to my store or something and it would be much cheaper than $300. CB3D.com for all your 3D printing needs. So with that, that is going to be a wrap for today's video. If you like this kind of content, definitely consider subscribing below. If you have any questions for me or Uncle Charlie on this install, or how if you want to see him customize this and the things you can do, drop a comment down below. A bee just flew in my ear. If you like this video, drop a thumbs up. It really helps the channel when people thumbs up and or comment. So see you next time. Peace. This is a bee on my forehead. Yeah.